Looking for baseline studies of large amounts of people so that they can they can do their scientific uh, studies and control and understand behavior in the human mind. It all sounds like paranoia. I believe the mind is an incredibly powerful thing, and there there isn't a man-made device that is capable, if you know how to use your mind, of controlling it. So open your mind and listen to Ground Zero Sundays at four on Hot Talk 860. KCNR. We're open in Weber, North Davis County at 670-8600. We're Hot Talk 860 KCNR. All right, 827, 48 degrees. Come on, I got Rick Taylor. I'm with Clyde Lewis. And Sir Licks a lot. It's uh, <laughs> drive by radio. Anyway, thank you for coming along. It's uh, 570 in Salt Lake today. 485 uh, It's something else I was going to say, but I can't remember what it was. So, uh, still at this hour, we got the top 10 list you guys to get to. We have to get to TV news. We have to talk about this Calvin Klein stuff sitting here, the Lucky Butt wrap up. In fact, we should probably do the Lucky Butt wrap up first. Because if we do this movie thing, it's probably we probably won't even finish. It's probably going to take us forever. So hold on, let me, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Let me just and the whole thing about the whatnot. I just had it. The I what just, hole? The what there? Well, I just, <coughs> damn it! I just, I just had them. They were. Oh. Yeah, you were just looking at it. you showing to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here they are. 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 Oh well, 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 damn it! Now we've got this again. Let's Good God! Let's All right, no, hold on. No? Okay, okay. Pause momentarily. We're gonna check news. So I can find the trick and ticket, and then we'll come back and check it. Okay, pause. Did go to did, do the thing. All right. Oh, Mr. Postman. 8:30, 48 degrees. Needle featuring the dead Stu Sutcliffe. Okay, now for those of you who didn't hear the show yesterday, as you know, our very unlucky about the clown was issued a ticket on the. Uh, Let's see, when when would this have been? On 28-10, 28 October 1996 for feeding parking meters downtown. And he had 14 days to respond to it. And so not counting Monday because it was a holiday, uh, he, we had to respond by yesterday. And so we went to call and, and, and uh, you know, swear to God, I've got the ticket right here. I photo, I've got a photocopy of it. And it's got, you know, this is a warning, ci- or this is not a warning citation. It's a citation notice to appear. Your appearance is required after 15 days and no later than 14 days from the date you're up. If later than 14 days, additional bail may be warranted or a bench warrant may be issued by the court. Blah, blah, blah. Whole point is, you've got to call, like, you know, we had to call by yesterday. So I'm going to replay very quickly what, what happened yesterday. You turn it over. You've got two t- uh, on the back. It says Fifth Circuit Court Clerk's Office. It's 533-3901. This is the number... Oh, I missed out there. And what have I done? 3901. These are the numbers issued, like, you know, to call and make it. Because if you don't call, then they come and they, like, issue a bench warrant for you. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Okay, so let's be fair. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll try it one more time. 3901. It's for the Fifth Circuit Court Clerk's Office at 451 South 200 East. The number you have reached, 5331901. Disconnected. No further information is available. Okay, so fair enough. Fine. They've got another phone number here. It says 
If you disagree with the charges or are required to appear in court, call 533-3935 between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Holidays accepted to arrange for hearings. So, fine. So we go ahead and call the other number. 533-3935. This is the only other number given. There's no other place listed. The number you have reached, 533-3935, has been disconnected. No further information is available. Okay, so both numbers... So, and this doesn't go for Lucky Butt, by the way. This goes for anybody downtown. And this is and this is for anybody that gets a traffic ticket, for anybody who is ticketed by the Fifth Circuit cops for any sort of driving infraction, whether it's speeding, whether it's a lane change, whether it's, you know, DUI for that matter, I guess, whether it's speeding parking meters. Anybody who gets this ticket downtown will have to call these numbers to set up a court date. And if you don't set up a court date, see, this is where it goes back to Martin's whole thing about everything the state does being a revenue-generating device. If you don't call and set up a court date and go make your appearance, and many people, by the way, have jobs, which means that they can't take time off to schlep around town looking for the court's office. So what happens is they issue a bench warrant for your arrest, and then, you know, what happened to, you know, what happened to Todd, what happened to me happens, you get pulled over for some other thing, like I got pulled over for making an illegal lane change. I made change only without signaling in Spokane. Are you done drumming your fingers on the, uh... I'm not drumming my fingers. Who's beeping? What is that noise? Oh, it's the microphone. It was kind Clyde. of... All right. And, and, what's, you're the, and what's happening here? You're beeping. Fries are done. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, there's a sales seminar downtown. Yeah, I better get right to that. I oh, boy, we'll run it. quick. Anyway, the point is, and so they took me, and I got pulled over for making an illegal lane change without a turn signal in Spokane a couple years ago, and they didn't mean arrested me. I actually got handcuffed, thrown in jail and everything, all because I had a speeding ticket that was outstanding. Same thing happens here. He doesn't pay it. They're going to issue a bench warrant. They're going to come and nail him. And, um, and, and the only way that you can do that, I mean, the, both of the phone numbers in the back here are just going to say, fine, fair enough. Both the phone numbers are disconnected. Maybe there's been some sort of error. So we called directory assistance yesterday. Directory assistance tells us there's no listing for a Fifth Circuit court clerk's office. There's First Circuit, Second Circuit, Third, and Fourth. There is no Fifth Circuit court clerk's office listed anywhere in directory assistance, nor is it listed anywhere. And she says, well, let me double check, sir. What's the address? So I give her the address, and she says, oh, no, there's nothing at that address. So when you get it, and so just be warned, because she told me they're still issuing the same tickets, the little green tickets you get when you get any sort of traffic violation. They're still issuing the same tickets. They haven't modified or changed at all. So the next time you're downtown and you get one of those things that says uh, citation and notice to appear and it's green and they ask you to sign it, you know, without admitting guilt, I, you know, I agree to whatever, be aware that the phone numbers and the addresses listed in the back don't go anywhere. And furthermore, and I still don't know where this place is. There's no way to find out. There's no way to, I, the phone numbers don't work, the address is, uh, uh, the building isn't there at this address, and it's not listed in directory information. And furthermore, the woman at the Third Circuit Court Clerk's Office, which is finally who I called, didn't have any information on how to get to the Fifth Circuit Court's building or get a hold of them. She didn't know anybody there either. So, let it be known that you cannot contact, you cannot respond to this ticket. So the next time you get a citation and notice to appear by anybody in the Fifth Circuit Court, note that, that, that it cannot be responded to. They've opted not to make it respondable to. Now, yes, Martin? Uh, no, this is just half of the nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. The uh, the only the only cap of the story is and I was I was all irritated about this all yesterday. Now now Clyde finally got a hold of somebody at at uh, the Third Circuit Court, and even though they weren't able to direct us to where the Fifth Circuit Court was, they couldn't tell us where it was. They couldn't give us the phone numbers. They were luckily enough able to tap into I guess I guess some of the computer databases are linked together. Yes, and which means that you can't actually. <clears throat> it doesn't really do you any good if you need to respond to this because you actually have to go down or call the Fifth Circuit Court. You actually have to speak to the Fifth Circuit Court to respond to the specific court date. But simply for informational purposes, I guess their databases are linked together. So you can't actually respond to it there, but you can find it information. So, Clyde, you called to find out about, about the ticket issue to Lucky Boat. What did you find out? Well, what, I, what, what happened was I went through the police department. The police department then refer, uh, referred me to the Treasury Office. The Treasury Office then referred me to another linking service. Probably and finally got a linking there, service. <laughs> it was, uh, finally got in, and uh, they put up the case number. They put up the, uh, the time the, the, the ticket was issued. And, and it was issued. Name. It was issued to Butt, <clears throat> first name Lucky, who was identified as being uh, a male, uh, white male with multicolored hair. 
there is no record of that ticket in the system. So, so the, the system, the system, it's lucky, but has slipped through the cracks. Exactly. So he has escaped. So, and and I, I want you all to appreciate what a momentous occasion this is. I want you to, I want you guys to fully understand the hugeness of this feat. That after all the trials and tribulations and derails we've gone through, after all the weeks of auditioning for a morning show sidekick, after getting various huge large guys in here to take over the mantle of, of morning show sidekick, after auditioning people for Lucky Weather Clown, putting through a grueling question and question and answer session, giving them multiple choice tests, that they were finally they were finally able to, to winnow it down and to pick uh, to pick our man who eventually became Lucky Butt. We had him go out in several daring suicide raids with Sabrina the stripper and. Uh, we uh, had him go downtown. It took three meter feeding escapades before he finally uh, finally got caught by the man. They gave him a ticket. Uh, we were uh, turned down by not one, not two, not three, but four different independent media sources who declined to write stories about this. And the only time it did make the news, they neglected to mention KCNR because they're weasel bastards. And not only Private Eye, but also the event and the Salt Lake Tribune all declined to write stories about Lucky Butt, even though at the same time they were reporting not one but three other stories, one in California, one in Indiana, and one in, uh, like, Louisiana or something. And people take it for, for, you know, for feeding parking meters. So after being screwed by every possible law and media source imaginable, we finally got some attention about this when he was actually given a ticket and uh, then we tried to go ahead and respond to the ticket. We tried to go ahead and get in touch with the court office. We were not able to do it. But Clyde was finally able to go through and hook up into a computer system and discover that Lucky Butt has indeed escaped the clutches of the legal system by slipping through the, the cracks once and for all. So what that was basically was a ruse to get him to feel kind of intimidated. Now, I'll have to continue to investigate this, but uh, as far as we can tell, Lucky Butt the Clown does not exist in records. He's a free man. He's a free man. Free at last. Go. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. He's free, free at, at last. last. So lucky, but there's the exciting <laughs> conclusion of the long and uh, the long and trepidatious lucky but saga that he's escaped the clutches of the law once and for all. There you go. It's 8:39, 48 degrees. Okay, when we come back. We have this movie thing we have to get to, and I want to talk about this Calvin Klein stuff if we have chance. However, we have today's top ten list from the uh, demented and rolling rock infused brain of Clyde Lewis. Lou, do you, how do you feel about rolling rock? Um. Yeah. You like rolling rock. <laughs> Clyde loves it. Clyde loves Rolling Rock more than he loves his own children. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Are you of age, Luke? Oh, well. I'm not of age, no. Oh, well. I wouldn't expect you to know anything about Rolling Rock then, because I know that you would never bring your lips to touch alcohol. That would be wrong. Well, all right. Um, okay, we've got today's top ten list. Now, you know there are many people out there that for some reason are not amused by KCNR. For whatever reason, it seems that since the first day I set foot in Salt Lake with nothing but the purest and best of intentions in my heart, aiming only to provide a little family entertainment, to bring a beam of radiant sunshine into the dull, drab existence of radio here in Salt Lake, radio dominated by no-talent, imitative, dry-as-dust, ancient losers who've been doing the same program over and over again for, for good 20, years. 25 years, They've talking about long time. light rail, you know, good morning. happy valley. We're yeah. surrounded by them. We're surrounded by them, it yeah, seems. it's all boring. No yeah, matter which innovative. way you look. And so... Ever since we came here and attempted to uh, to revitalize radio, which we have accomplished, by the way, and we can tell we revitalized it due to the large number of imitators, due to the, the tremendous number of people around us who have stolen ideas from us, who have emulated us, who have aped us, stations with, and let's be fair, stations with much larger ratings, stations with bigger audiences, you know, with stations big, with balls, with bigger, with bigger signals. Stations that have been around for a long time that have a larger audience, I'll be fair about it. That's true. Yet who somehow have felt threatened by us and so spend all their morning broadcast taking shots at stations that really shouldn't bother them all that much. That's how we know we've succeeded. But not everybody's always on the same page. Sometimes you get people who, who aren't in the same boat as you. And they're constantly thinking there must be a way to improve this station if we could if we could just replace this Clyde and Rick nonsense with something. And so we decided to help them out a little bit today. We've come up We've come up with the top ten other things that could be broadcast on KCNR instead of KCNR. Number ten, Patrick Wiggins and Mythological Archaeology. Number nine, the Byzantine History Channel. Number eight, Things That Ooze. Number seven, Body Deformities of the Rich and Famous. Number six, Your Uvula and You. Number five. MTV presents Frank Sinatra on Life Support. Unplugged. Number four. Latter-day Saint Taxidermy. Number three. Five Steps to Weenie Steamer Repair. Number two. All About Boogers. 
<laughs> and the number one thing that we could broadcast on KCNR other than KCNR would be... Well, <laughs> no, you wouldn't believe us no. if we told you. What are going to say? We'll be back. <laughs>